Hi there everyone, welcome to our first week where we're going to be discussing ethical theories and for this week we're going to be discussing uh, Russ Schaefer Landau's piece on utilitarianism or consequentialism. That's going to amount to the same thing for our purposes. Now to begin with I want to try to say just a little something about the purpose of ethical theory. So ethical theory is a branch of philosophical inquiry that inquires about the nature of the good, right? So what, you know, we very often judge things to be good or bad, right? Uh, that's a good person, that's a bad person, that was good for me, that was bad for me, etc. And this branch of ethics is really just interested in the question, what makes something good, right? Why do we say that it was a good thing that such and such event happened, right? What factors into our reasoning or our decision making when uh, we call things good? So on the one hand, ethical theory is meant to investigate something that we are already familiar with, right? We make judgments about right and wrong, good and bad, every day of our lives, right? In the course of our reasoning about our decision making. However, we don't often feel the need to super duper reflectively in a philosophical mood inquire as to those that, you know, the basis of that reasoning, right? So ethical theory is meant to test our ordinary assumptions about right and wrong to see if they really ultimately at the end of the day stand up to significant amounts of scrutiny right we need to examine those things that we consider to be good to see if our common sense everyday judgments about them are really right or wrong the moral theory that we're discussing for our first week and in this video is utilitarianism or you can also say consequentialism. They're going to turn out to be the same thing for our purposes as I mentioned earlier. Utilitarianism is in a way the most basic moral theory and it can be summed up in this slogan that I've written on this top left quadrant of the board, right? do as much good as you can, right? So the base for the word utilitarianism comes from the word utility, right? So, uh, uh, you know, practicality is very important to this branch of uh, ethical thought, right? And the basic idea of consequentialism is that we evaluate morality, we evaluate judgments of right or wrong based on the consequences that they produce. I also wanna make something very clear, right? When we are interested in ethical theory, we're not interested in doing like a psychological survey of the views that people already have. Instead, as philosophers, we're interested primarily in investigating the reasons underlying those beliefs, right? So, you know, it's not enough to point to any kind of moral belief and be like, yes, you know, this is universally or widely accepted or something to that effect, right? Because we can universally or widely accept views for bad reasons. Right? So it's quite important for ethical theory that we're not just concerned with providing a description of people's views about right and wrong, but we're analyzing the norm or the reason underlying that decision making and subjecting it to a kind of critical scrutiny. So consequentialism refers to the branches of moral theory that think that what is relevant when you're examining, uh, you know, the reasons underlying moral decision making, what's relevant are the consequences that a given action will produce. So if I'm analyzing, uh, you know, if an action is right or wrong, right, I can look at any historical events 
then the basis on which you would make that judgment is precisely whether or not it maximized good consequences. You can see how that's contained in the utilitarian slogan, do as much good as you can. In other words, maximize the good. To illustrate what this means concretely, on this uh, top right quadrant of the board, I've written a little drawing of something that you have probably seen in some context or another called the trolley problem. This was actually a somewhat popular meme, right? Um, and the basic idea is simply this. It's, okay, imagine you're at a, 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 a rail yard, I guess. You're at a rail yard and there's a trolley coming and it's currently going to run over five people, right? So it's currently headed towards this uh, 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 southern, I guess, uh, route, right? But if you pull the lever, then instead of killing five people, the uh, trolley will only kill one person tied to the train tracks. Of course, this is an unrealistic scenario. I mean, we don't live in a comic book, so people are not very often tied to train tracks, but it does illustrate a very common moral dilemma, which is that we are very often in the situation where we have to make significant trade-offs, right? Some of our actions are going to help some people and hurt some others. This is a particularly dramatic case. It's life and death, and you can also directly quantify, you know, the impact of your actions, at least immediately. But it points to a moral conflict that is very, very basic in all of our lives, which is just that we're often faced with moral dilemmas where the interests of some have to be sacrificed for the interests of others. And so it's usually thought that utilitarianism provides a straightforward answer as to what you should do if you're in the situation of the person who can pull the lever. And their answer is pull the lever, right? Why do you pull the lever? Because the good in this case, the thing that you want to maximize is saving lives. And you save five lives if you pull the lever and only kill one person. Whereas the reverse would involve, you know, killing five people and saving only one person. So hopefully you can see how concretely the sort of adage of consequentialism and utilitarianism inform a kind of moral decision making here. What's relevant, what you should be paying attention to in the trolley problem is how many people you have the possibility of saving. And that is what is relevant on the utilitarian analysis. Now, most people and most philosophers agree with utilitarianism on that assessment. And they say, yes, obviously, you should kill the one person to save the five. But we're going to be examining another branch of ethicists, another branch of moral philosophy next week, which entirely disagrees with this assessment and says that you should let the five die so that you do not need to kill the one. We're going to talk about that in more depth next week, but it's just important that you see for now the different ethical theories have different ways of thinking about this particular moral dilemma. And the characteristic feature of utilitarianism is that it focuses on consequences and especially maximizing good consequences and minimizing bad consequences. Now Schaefer Landau gives a, a sort of like five step process that is involved with utilitarian decision making, but I thought we can simplify that actually further down to only two steps. So I've written that in this lower left quadrant of the board here. Basically, there are two parts to any, uh, you know, a moral evaluation from the utilitarian perspective. Step one is you're deciding what it is that you consider to be intrinsically valuable. 
So to say something is intrinsically valuable, we think of it as being valuable for its own sake, right? The contrast case would be something that is only extrinsically valuable, something that is valuable only for other things. An example of something that is only extrinsically valuable is money. Money is used to procure goods and services. But if money did not have the ability to procure goods and services, then it would not be valuable all on its own. So the utilitarian doesn't seek to maximize what is extrinsically valuable, but what is intrinsically valuable, right? What is authentically good for itself. Now, I've written here that this is a normative dimension of utilitarian thinking, right? Why do I say that? See the root word here, norm, right? We're deciding on a standard, right? Namely, the standard of what makes something right and what makes something wrong. Often, utilitarians are hedonists, right? And that doesn't just mean that they, uh, you know, um, I don't know, eat excessively or have too much sex or, you know, something like that. But instead, it means that what they think of as being intrinsically valuable is pleasure and pain is intrinsically uh, 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 not valuable, right? Intrinsically harmful, intrinsically uh, meant to be avoided. So you can see all these factors into the decision-making and the trolley problem. If five people die, well, that's going to cause an immense amount of suffering, both on their behalf, the pleasures that they otherwise would have had that they don't get to have now, and their families, and so on, right? So if you value pleasure and pain, then, you know, you have accomplished Step one, you've decided the norm, the thing that you're going to use to evaluate the consequences. Now, importantly, this step is not enough, right? This step just tells you what it is that you should care about. Step two is also critically important. You need to predict which course of action will maximize the good. Right? So in the trolley problem, it's very clear and straightforward. I mean, it's one versus five, right? You can just see the people tied up, you know immediately the consequences of your behavior, etc. Right? But in many moral dilemmas, actually, the consequences are not that clear. So, for example, later on, we're going to be discussing climate change. And it's very, very difficult to quantify how different kinds of temperature changes affects well-being of people across the planet. And therefore, it can be very difficult to figure out which course of action uh, will maximize overall good or overall utility. One thing that you would notice is that this is descriptive, right? We're describing a state of affairs. We're not holding it to a standard. Um, and so step two is more empirical, right? It's a kind of question that is about figuring out, uh, you know, what's going to happen if certain events transpire, right? It's the sort of predictive analysis that's common in the natural and social sciences. Whereas step one is something that really the philosopher has to figure out, right? The philosopher has to go in and figure out what it is that should be relevant. How should we assess or analyze any given moral dilemma? So we can uh, end this video with a brief discussion of some features that Schaefer Lando says characterizes the utilitarian or consequentialist approach, right? To begin with, the utilitarian position is impartial. So in other words, what I'm seeking to maximize from the utilitarian perspective is overall goodness, not just my goodness, right? I'm not just looking after my own uh, pleasure and avoidance of suffering, but I'm looking at maximizing pleasure and avoidance of suffering for 
everyone, right? So in other words, my suffering, my pain, etc., my pleasure is worth the same amount as everyone else's. Similarly, Schaefer Lander describes utilitarianism as future oriented. And what Schaefer Landau means by this is just that utilitarianism is always about maximizing future utility. It's not really concerned with providing a moral evaluation or assessment or anything like that of the past. That's not really what the framework is meant to do. Furthermore, really what the utilitarian approach is meant to help us with, it's meant to help our decision making in situations where there are major trade-offs, right? Like in the trolley problem situation. If you just think about yourself as like a pacifist and you have an absolute rule not to harm people, well, it can be very difficult to figure out what to do when you're in the situation of the person in the trolley problem. It seems like no matter what you do, someone ends up being hurt. The utilitarian framework is meant to help us think about what we should do in those situations where, you know, someone is going to end up hurt and we have to maximize overall well-being. Therefore, the utilitarian moral theory is flexible, right? Because you're aiming to uh, 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 maximize good consequences, the actions that will maximize good consequences in one situation might not be the uh, actions that would maximize consequences in another situation. And finally, this approach is broadly naturalistic. And what I mean by that is that the approaches of the natural sciences and social sciences and examining the world are relevant and modeled in a certain way by the utilitarian approach. The utilitarian approach takes a kind of natural scientific way of looking at the world, of using statistics and probabilities and assessing consequences, and says that that should be at the core of our ethical decision making. I hope that you found this video interesting. I'm really looking forward to hearing what you all think about utilitarianism in our first discussion forum. See you next week.